welcome to the Lady Stairs Knits podcast. I'm really excited to be making another video. And if you're new here, my name is Sarah. I am a knitter who normally lives in Philadelphia, but currently I'm on a trip back home to Edinburgh. And I'm staying in my parents' house and having a good time. It's been about two weeks since I last filmed and I've been making a huge amount of progress on one project. So I thought I would show you my progress on this cabled card cardigan that I've been making. Um, and also show you all of the wool that I brought to Edinburgh with me. You might be able to hear my pet bird singing. He's 20 years old and he's a cockatiel. And I haven't gotten to see him in like four years. So it's really good to see him. It's a really nice day here. I'm sitting in front of a window. It's been sort of raining on and off, which is just the way I like it. Um, I got a bit of sunburn last week. I have this watch tan now, which I've never had before. Um, I felt a bit betrayed coming from the heat of Philadelphia to Scotland. I thought this isn't gonna be where I get sunburn, but it happened. The main thing that I like better about the slightly cooler weather of this week compared to last week is that I actually get to wear some of my knits, um, which I haven't been able to wear in Philly for a few months now. So I'm going to show you the cardigan that I've been working on. Um, it's getting there. I feel like it's both a marathon and a sprint now. I've been working on it nonstop. Um, I'll show you the sleeves first. Here's the first sleeve. Now, the sleeves were the first things that I worked on when I began this pattern. And I think that that was quite a good idea. I often, I lose motivation when it comes to the sleeves and I'd never made a cabled cardigan or really a cabled garment of any sort um, until this one so I really didn't want to lose motivation and I knit these on a trip to LA probably two months ago by now um, and it's nice to have them done. I think that the top seems a bit wide from just when I hold it up to my arm um, and I might add a little bit of length and a little bit and a few more decreases depending on how it all seems together. Um, but I'll tell you about some of the modifications I've made and how that might impact the way that the sleeves are shaped after I show you the body. Here's the other sleeve. It's the same. I did the sleeves two at a time, like simultaneously on the same needle, which is quite challenging. I'd never done that technique before. I'd never done two at a time socks before either. Um, these are knit flat, so it wasn't, it was a little bit less complicated than it would be to knit something in the round two at a time, but I think, I enjoy knitting things simultaneously, but I think that the two at a time, especially with the cables, was too complicated for me. I ended up, it just, every time I made a mistake, I had to rip out both, whereas if I had done them one at a time, even if I was knitting just 10 rows on one, 10 rows on the other. I probably wouldn't have had that issue. Um, but uh, it's good that they're done. And I've been sort of learning from that lesson in knitting the body, which is almost complete. So this is what I have so far on the body. It's worked flat, but I have these two pieces which are finished just off on um, that pony bead cord. And how do I even show this? Here. So you can see the big cable pattern in the back. Um, it's got a center panel of three braids, and then it's got this um, more complicated cable on either side, and that smaller, not smaller, but this 
non-braid cable is also repeated on each of the sides of the front along with a, a larger plait, but that sort of gets taken away as part of the v-neck shaping. Um, and then there's double seed stitch, or maybe this, I don't really understand the, I haven't learned the differences between seed and moss and double moss um, under the, in the sides of the body. And then there's a panel of um, reverse stockinette, which the pattern designer says that is where you would put waist shaping if you were doing waist shaping. Um, so that's how it's constructed. A detail that I love is how the, these smaller cables go into the ribbing at the bottom, which is also a detail that's included in the sleeves. I think that that's really nice. Um, and it's almost finished. I've been working on it almost every day. I said that I. I thought to myself I would get a lot done on the flight, but I do love to read on airplanes. And by the time I had read my book and eaten dinner, since it was an overnight flight, they give you dinner, they turned the lights off. I pulled my knitting out, I got ready, and then they turned the lights off. So I couldn't, I just decided I'm not, I tried the little light when I was reading and it was really dim and I thought I can't work on this um, with so little light. So I just went to sleep. So I got none done on the plane. And then the day after, I was very jet lagged and extremely tired because even though I tried to sleep on the plane, I didn't actually get much rest. Um, and I just did everything wrong because I was so tired. So I, then the next day I undid everything that I'd done the previous day. And then the day after that, I actually got working on it. Um, I had finished the body when I left Philadelphia. So what I've done since leaving is separate the body from, separate the fronts and backs, bind off in the arm, do the shaping there, and everything above there. So did I mention that the pattern is the bon bot Botanist by Thea Coleman? If I didn't, that's what it is. If you've seen the, my podcast before, this will be a familiar story and yarn to you. But if you're new, I will quickly explain the backstory, which is that um, the son of a close friend of my dad's, who is a farmer, is also a farmer, and he and his fiance have a flock of Angora goats, which I think are related to the whistle bear angora goats. I think it's the northernmost flock of goats in, of angora goats in the UK. Quite cool. So they have been keeping them and taking care of them and along with their sheep. And then they have produced this beautiful wool, um, which as soon as they released it, I was sending off emails to get a sweater quantity and I knew I wanted to make something like this and they're getting married in July so I've been trying to finish this cardigan to bring to the wedding so that I can show it to them well not necessarily show it to them at their wedding because they'll probably be busy but have it ready so that when I see them at an appropriate time I can show it to them because I think that they would like to see it um, and I'm also just so excited to have such and it was amazing, look at it. I can't believe I made this. It's gonna block out. Um, so I'll tell you how much I have left to go. I have six rows left on the back. And then, see, about six rows. And then I need to knit the button band which I plan on doing a vertical button band that I'll sew on because I saw someone on Ravelry did that on theirs and it looked really nice. So I think that I will do that. I'll do a double knit vertical button band on a much smaller needle size so it will be quite tight. And then um, 
I need to block it and seam it. I don't have blocking pins here and I think it will need to be pinned because I've knit the size 47 inches, 47 inches. There's no shaping, so that's just 47 inch tube. And the body is currently measuring 37 inches. There's a lot of stretch to these cables, but even if I don't get to the 47, it will be all right. But I, the issue is that the sleeves are measuring correctly to the pattern. So I need to get some extra width in in order for the sleeves to look okay. I modified the armhole a little bit. In the original pattern, you don't bind off any stitches for the underarm. Um, and you just decrease, which makes sense based on the way that the sleeves are shaped because there's it's quite rolly, so it's a bit hard to show. But there's um, a bit of shaping here. So if there was no stitches bound off of the underarm, this would fit in perfectly because it's a well-written pattern. But I, I wanted the armholes to be a bit bigger um, and I also wanted them to be a little bit, I wanted it to be a little bit higher up on the shoulder. On some of the patterns on Ravelry, it looks like the sleeve sits quite high on the shoulder. Like some of them look quite drop shoulder, which isn't what I'm going for. Um, so I wanted to modify it so that the sleeves connected to close to the cable portion which is why I have decreased it. I think in my size, which is the 47, which I think is size five, maybe, there's a, you have like 10 extra stitches in the, these sections. I mean, this will stretch a lot when I block it. Probably I'll get like this much. That'll be enough. I mean, I'd, I think that this will, be really nice and with the button band, I'll get a little bit more width as well. Um, but it is narrower than it is in the pattern. My whole arm shaping is, I've gone off road. But I think it will be good. I sort of push the two together. So I think that even if I don't change anything from here on, it will be all right. But I'm open to re-knitting the top of the sleeves because it is currently the 27th so I have about 11 days before the wedding and that's enough time to add a couple rows to the top of each of the sleeves. I'm not sure if I should block it and then seam it because if I block it flat I won't be able to make sure that the sleeves are the right width but if I block it seamed, I don't, I just don't know. If, if you watching have made a pieced cable cardigan like this, how did you block it? Because <laughs> I don't really know. Um, I do want to add some width to it, but even if I don't get very much, it will still fit. Um, I just don't want the sleeves to look much bigger than the body. Although if the sleeves are bigger, I can just overlap them a little bit in the seams. I would be fine with doing that. I'm not undoing the sleeves. They took a long time. But isn't this amazing? I'm very proud of it. I can't believe that I've made this. And it's so gorgeous. The wool is so gorgeous. And it's been a real treat to knit. Although I am quite ready to be working on something easier. Um, the neck shaping, it's just like a V-neck, which I had to slightly change the neck shaping as well, but not much. Um, just because I would have ended, if I'd kept decreasing on the inside, I would have ended up with way too few stitches on the top of the shoulder. And another thing that I'll say about this is that I am knitting this at quite a tight gauge, not in the stockinette portions, the stockinette portions, it's quite, in, I would say, tight to normal, but in the, these are the stockinette, this is what I was looking at. In the cable sections, it feels really quite stiff and it doesn't feel very soft. Um, the wool is 50% angora goat or mohair, 50% 
I'll just read on 50% Shetland. And when you knit it at quite a loose gauge, it's extremely soft. I have this swatch, these swatches here, which I can tell you about in a minute. And this is done at um, size 10 US, which I think is a five and a half or a five. I think it's a five and a half, and this is at a five. This one is a five, and this one's a five and a half. But it's quite drapey and really soft. You can see the halo. But then when it's knit at this tight gauge, it's not so soft. It feels really sturdy. So I wonder how it will block. Um, I think that I'll finish the back of this today and hopefully get the button band done over the next day or two as well and then get it blocked. I really am eager to get it blocked because sometimes things take ages to dry. I don't know how or where I'm gonna block it. I don't have any pins. Um, maybe get some, because I think I'm, yeah. I don't know. I'm sure it'll be fine. So I have six more rows and the button band to do. And I have this and this. over three skeins of yarn left, not including the ball that's attached to the cardigan still. So when I was packing for this trip, I thought if something happens, like what if, I don't know, what if um, something happens to some of the wool and I haven't brought all that I have and I don't have enough to finish the cardigan, I'm gonna feel really stupid. So I just need to bring all of it, even though it's way more than I need. So I wound all up and I brought all of it. And then I was thinking, why don't I just plan to knit another project in this wool while I'm here that's quite different so it won't feel like samey knitting with the same wool. Um, so I'm planning to knit a ranunculus, I think. Either a ranunculus or a love note or something at a loose, much looser gauge, like a summer jumper, because um, I think that that will be really nice. So that's my plan for once I finish this. I think it's going to be a perfect palette cleanser after this cabled cardigan, and I'm sure that I'll have enough wool for it. And if not, I'm going to, I can get more, I think. If not, I can just make it more cropped. I'm not worried about not having enough wool. I don't think that the ranunculus normally takes more than seven or 800 meters, I think, and that's how much I have. So that's my plan for after, and that's what these swatches were for before I left. I've been carrying these swatches around in my bag just to see how it wears, if I still like the gauge, asking some friends, um, this is a smaller gauge. I think I like the bigger gauge better and it will go faster. So that's something that I'm interested in right now. And you can see it's not see-through even in front of this window. So that's nice. That is my plan for after if I get around to it. That's my intention. Um, I packed too early. I know that this is a lot of knitting, but I feel like I haven't, I don't have very much to show. So, um, because I packed my knitting like a week before I left, um, so because I had packed my knitting, I cast on a new project when I was still in Philly, and I just thought, I want to make a pair of socks for my gran. Um, and she's knit for everyone in the family, she's made me a beautiful cable jumper dress. I made her a jumper a few years ago and she always talks about how she's never made hand knit socks because one time she tried and they turned out with high heels. So she's never tried again, which is quite funny. But I think that hand knit socks are one of the joys of life. So I thought I would make her a pair. And her favorite color is red. So I am, um, 
using this color by West Yorkshire Spinners, which is inspired by red robins and their colorways, and she likes birds. And this is, the contrast color is um, Ravel Reread by Malabrigo. Both of these I had in stash, and I just thought I would cast them on. Um, and this is what I had so far. I've gotten, I think that, well, most people who don't wear hand knit socks, or maybe just, I like to wear loose socks, but a lot of the time I think, oh, these socks are going to be way too tight, and the person likes that. So I think that these might be tight, but I don't know if she'll like that. But um, you can see the color repeat, it's nice. I'm just doing a two by two rib, and I did that slip knot cast on, which takes forever, but is so nice and so stretchy. Um, all of my favorite socks are the ones where I've used the slipknot cast on. It makes a really big difference. Um, if I can find, I think it, I don't know what the name of it is, but if I can find it, I'll put it in um, the description box below. Although, okay, so I made these socks. I started this just sort of thinking, oh, it'll be nice to give this to Nanny. That's what I call her. But then now I've heard that she's been having some issues with swelling, so I think maybe these might be too small. So I might end up casting on another pair that have more stitches in the leg. Because um, even though this is stretchy, I don't want her to be uncomfortable. So I might cast on another pair. Um, to make sure that they'll fit her. I'm not sure. I did a pearl bump after the, after the, um, well, it's all ribbed, but after the contrast color at the top. And then in order to avoid uh, the pearl bumps on the right side of the sock, I did another, I did a row of plain knitting which really sinks into the texture, so you can't even see it, it just looks very neat. Ravelry Red is not the best match for this color, but um, it's okay. I'll just try and do the heel not right next to the red stripe, and I think that it will be fine. I, I wish I could give her, I wish, I hope it would be ready by the time that I get to her, but I've been stressing out about this cardigan so much that I'm not gonna pressure myself to finish another project. And I think that she'll get it as a knitter. Also, she didn't even ask for a pair of socks. She might not even want them. Um, but I think that they would probably be quite nice. And if she doesn't want them, that's okay. And I will keep them because we have the same size feet. Um, I, I'm using Magic Loop because they're ribbed, but I would probably prefer to use DPNs. It's just because I was traveling, Magic Loop is quite easy to travel with. I also brought a circular needle just, just in case I end up making her another pair of socks that aren't ribbed. So this is the second slash third project, if you count the ranunculus as a project. I don't know if I count it. It's more like, what can I do with this wool? Um, this bag, it's not a knitting bag, it's, it, I got it for free when I bought some makeup from the company Merit. They were sending out this bag and I, I really like it. It's sort of like a faux corduroy. It's not got that, it's not really got the texture of corduroy, but it kind of looks like it. And it's good for socks. I really, I, it's nice. Um, okay, I brought over... For this, this is a three week trip, by the way. And I'm one week, just under one week into it. Um, the third sort of batch of yarn that I brought over is some Nutidin. I thought that I would make another cardigan or jumper, sort of a similar idea to the ranunculus, but like a lightweight, casual jumper. That would be good for late summer, sort of throwing on in the evenings. Um, I 
I was thinking of doing like a v-neck because I don't think I've ever well I have made a v-neck jumper but only once and it was a very specific thing so I was thinking I would do a v-neck and I brought this color which I have from Nutidin. I only have 350 grams of this and I didn't buy they had more the last Nutidin update but I was on a plane so I couldn't get it um, but I'll just make it as long as I can. I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to hold it double. Um, and I just brought all that I have. It's just all in this little bag. So I won't pull it all out. But I made some swatches for this. Because I love, I love making swatches. Like a nice big swatch that you finish properly. Like with the edges. Um, it's sort of like a treat for me. <laughs> I just really like to play with the different fabrics and see what I like and see what the difference is um, and see how much my gauge change changes. Maybe eventually I'll just feel like I have that information ready to go, but I still think that I'm learning so much every time I make a swatch. And then I just have them, like sometimes it's a coaster. It's really only useful for a coaster. But who doesn't like coasters? So I made these swatches in a different color because I don't have very much of the light green and I might be in a game of yarn chicken. So I thought I'll make the swatches in a different color. Even though the colors can be different thicknesses from each other, so it's not really that useful. It is still useful because both of these colors um, are just the regular blend so it's not they neither of them have any specialty wool and I have a lot of this because they had ran out of 500 gram bags so I bought two 300 grams so I have 600 grams so I'll show you the color I don't I think this is infinitive here that's a good faithful it's, it's a purple, it's got some sort of blue and it's got some red. It's sort of a plummy purple. I think it's really nice. This is one of my colors um, that I really like. This is 4.5. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, I don't know the U.S. sizes. I do, I put the knots. I tie knots in the end of what size needle I use. And since I don't really know how to get around the 2.25, 2.5 thing, I just use the U.S. sizes. But I don't know what the U.S. sizes translate to in millimeters, and I think about the needle sizes in millimeters normally. So this is a U.S. size 9, whatever that is, and this is an 8. And oh, they both look quite holy when you, um, in this light. But I, yeah, so I think I'm going to be making... This will be a very nice, like squishy um, v-neck. So that is everything I brought with me to Scotland. I don't know if I'll be buying any yarn while I'm here. It seems impossible that I won't, but I have a lot of really great stuff with me and I've been feeling very content with what I have and excited about it. So I might not end up buying anything I think that once I finish this cable card again, I can relax a little bit. I'm not normally one to work on the same project every day for a month, but I sort of have been doing that, except for when it was packed. Um, so I think it's quite likely that all, that both of these other projects that are garments will get cast on. Although if I don't cast on one of them, I'll probably leave the yarn here so that I can just use it when I'm back in September. Um, and 
that's pretty much everything that I have to show you. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a good two weeks, and I hope that you have enjoyed my video, and goodbye.